everybody. Come on in, come on in. Welcome to Wife After Prison. Mm. Uh, I'm so excited about the live today. Uh, we're just going to be having a conversation with uh, Mr. Anthony. It's Cologne, like the perfume. Like the cologne. Oh, cologne. I didn't, the hugs. cologne. I didn't call you a whole colon. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I, I used to be an ass. <laughs> oh, my God. Cologne. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask you about that. And no Mr. Problem. Eric, Eric Benson, uh, again, thank you so yeah. much. Uh, Wife After Prison. Wife After Prison was founded in 2018 to raise awareness of post-incarceration syndrome and what post-incarceration syndrome is it's a set of symptoms and behaviors that those who are either in prison or have been released from prison it's a set of uh symptoms and challenges that they have i mean they experience it has to do with psychological distress it has to do with social reintegration it has to do with behavior patterns it has to do with uh, uh cognitive impairment so this is what we we talk about on this platform and i had the pleasure a couple of weeks ago of uh, being interviewed on anthony and eric's platform and i enjoyed it so much i was like uh uh we gotta do this again y'all need to come over to my house so this is what the conversation is about today uh and one thing about this when I first gained knowledge of post-incarceration syndrome with my uh, my friend who I was once married to, when his behavior just started to change on me and I didn't understand, Kevin uh, did 28 years in prison and I didn't understand why had this man changed on me. And I said he changed uh, uh, abruptly, but he was changing internally and I didn't see that. Mm. All that stuff, he was dealing with all this stuff on the inside. But all of a sudden, it came to a head. He was dealing with the pre-incarceration trauma. He was de dealing with incarceration trauma. And then you come out to a whole wife. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, you come out to a whole, a whole alpha wife, right? And so, uh, yeah, it caused Kevin and I to go through uh, uh, some very, very dark times. And ultimately, uh, we ended up getting divorced. But again, he is my friend who I was once married to. So we still do this work together. But this is this this is a real topic, and, and and I was very very irritated because I was like, ain't nobody talking about this, mm -hmm. ain't nobody talking about the 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 mental state of our loved ones who are coming home, nobody having this conversation. Nope. Man, let me tell you something. It landed in the right household. I tell you that. I know that's right. So, yeah, it landed in the right household, and so this is when I started Wife After Prison, even having to write the book. But we're gonna get into that. But my thing today is just to chop it up with these brothers. Success after lockdown. Now I'm gonna tell y'all this. I was thinking about this morning. There is, there's, you know, someone asked me this week. It was, it's a wife. She was like, "Is there any success stories?" Cause she's, yeah, because she's hearing about the, you know, same behavior, different zip code, same yeah, behavior, right. different country. So she That's asked right. that question. And I said, yeah, there is some successful stories. There is. And there's a lot of light being shined on that. And why I applaud that. My heart aches sometimes for those who are coming, have come out and they're struggling. And they're struggling and nobody is telling their stories. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's where I come in. I'm, I'm going to tell their story, my story, and everybody else's story. But uh, I, 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 I selected you guys because I, I felt your heart. I see your passion, right? And I think when I'm, when I'm looking for, for individuals to speak, I, believe, I, I look for individuals who are honest, who are honest about this thing, and who are transparent about the struggle, not only the success, while we applaud that, we still need to talk about the struggle so that we can help those who have not yet gotten to the to the point and to the space and to the seat where you guys are. So we have to navigate that and so that they can get to where you are. So I'm going to shut my mouth with for, without further ado. Uh -oh, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to shut my mouth and, and just let Anthony and Eric if you guys don't mind just tell us where you're located you know how much time you did and uh how long you've been out 
and when we then I have some other questions about all that other stuff. Yeah, so you guys yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this, you this, guys this, go ahead and, and, and this jump is, in. This is BX. This is BX. We from the Bronx. The BX is the Bronx. Oh, no, 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 that's right. <laughs> okay. that's the Bronx. <laughs> Born and raised in the Bronx, New York City. Um, we we was raised together on the same block. Anthony and I. I, I know I can speak for that. And you know we um we got in the streets together. You know, um, there's some, there's a little conflict or a debate that, you know, I brought Mr. Cologne to the streets <laughs> or he brought me, but we're not going to get into that. We were in the streets, you know, <laughs> we, and we were in deep, you know, um, it was an experience for us that, you know, that where we learned from our mistakes. Um, I remember my grandmother, she used to say, you know, you're going to learn the hard way. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to either be six feet under or you're going to be in that prison. Wow. And I wound wow. up being in that prison for 27 years and six months for taking a young man's life, just like myself, you know, that didn't deserve to die. You know, um, um, that was my my state of mind back then was um, caught up in the street life that, you know, I just thought that, you know, everything was peachy. And we 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 go out there and we sell drugs to the community and and we you know kill off you know all the people in our community. Um, back then I didn't have a thought pattern, um, in terms of a growth and development pattern in in, in my psyche. You know, I just uh, you know, follow. Oh. I was a follower. I yeah, followed the times. You uh -huh. know, followed the times and, and where we were at. You know, growing up in the Bronx. Um, today, I think we 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 create. I know we created this platform, just just like you created yours to find people that's genuine, that's honest, that's into nothing but positivity. We have no room on success after lockdown for negativity. We have no room for that. You know, so we we target. Uh, uh, and, and find those men and women that's formerly incarcerated, that's home, staying home, and giving back to the community in a positive way. There's there's those of us that come home and we go back, you know, and, and that's just the facts and the reality of this, that some people learn faster than others. Some people get it faster than others. You know, some people, it, it, they'll never get it. They go into the grave without getting it. That's the reality too that we cannot shake it just it is what it is so so you know we here to create to we here to to bring this platform to light and to show society that you know that everybody is not coming home and going back because right. society has this perception that you know if you've been to jail you're going right back and to a degree, you know, they they have some just some truth to that. You know, with, with, yeah. with, a, with some of us, yeah. however, we here to highlight those that's not. And 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 I think that when you look at it across the board, whether we in New York or Houston or Utah, you know, um, I think um, individuals like myself and Anthony and others, uh, men and women, that's in their state you know, that was formerly incarcerated, that's home and giving back to the community, I think we bring that recidivism rate down. Right, right. You know, so let me... Yes. Yeah, so let me ask you this. So what age did you guys get in the streets? So what 10, age? 10, 11. 10 and 11, yeah? Yeah, well, yeah. 10 and yeah. 11, started really swinging in the street. For me, I was about 12 years old when I was like really fully committed to the street. Yeah, uh, me as well. Yeah. We, Were you still I, in school? We, I never finished school. Um, I got my education in prison as, yes. as Eric had. Um, I grew up in a broken home. I grew up in a broken home. Uh, that, you know, I don't know how my mother, my grandmother did it, but they were the only two females in my family that didn't do drugs or anything like that. And you know, I'm talking about I grew up in a broken down house with uh, my grandmother, my grandfather, my sister, my three brothers, my mom, my father that raised me. And as time went by, uh, my mom always had like an open door policy. Uh, so like whoever needed help or needed a place to stay, you was welcome, come on over this way. And it became very overpopulated. 
Uh, all my brothers, my sisters was on drugs. My grandfather, my uncle were on drugs and alcohol. Uh, so literally for me being the youngest one, I was never really enticed by getting high. I was more about wanting to buy the nice stuff and make my own money. Um, and, you know, at a young age, I, I found that the only way to do that was to go to the neighborhood around the corner, ask the older guys, hey, you want me to hold on to your drugs for, you know, for a pair of sneakers, for for this or that, because my mother couldn't afford it, right? And, but it was almost like a battlefield. Me and my uncle literally used to fist fight just about every other day. And there's a guy that was in Vietnam War, right? But when he got drunk, uh, to me, I was like his little target. Right, and like at twelve years old, I, I moved out of my house. At twelve, um, at, at twelve, I moved out of my house and moved in with my lo- local drug dealer. Um, you know, because it, it was it was almost insane for me to like. I would go buy a nice little outfit. Right, like I remember one one time, I went and bought this nice little outfit. I was must have been like twelve years old, twelve and a half years old, and I woke up literally with just in my underwear, and my clothes was gone, my sneakers was gone. And I and I and, and I, I, I I wake up and I'm running around the house and I'm looking for it and I come outside to the front porch and like my uncle, my grandfather, my brother, they all there like beat me up, Scotty, which just like wow and yeah wow. and so like that was the last straw for me. Uh, and wow. so when I had an opportunity to run out, that's what I did. Right, I was finding love and acceptance and some guidance even though you know the older guys in the block wasn't positive to me they was because they embraced me right yeah. they, they 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 sheltered me they protected me i felt the sense of belonging so 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 do you think they were grooming you i don't think that they was grooming me i think that they yes i i, I think we was all we had like in the neighborhood, we was, we was all we had. Like my neighborhood. Under the circumstances. Yeah, like under the circumstances, yeah. You know, we would like all we had. Like, you know, we'll meet on the corner and we wouldn't let no one come into that into that atmosphere and violate anyone. So for me, like not fighting against my own people was a big difference from what I was waking up to at home. Oh, wow. So I felt protection from the people on the block as opposed yeah. to my own household. So for me, it was a no-brainer. So let me ask you this, guys. what? Who went to prison first? I think we were like both going in and out. For yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I was, so how many bids did you do? I did, I did a total of four. Four short stints and then the... Yes. So I, my first, I went, I went into juvenile. I went to juvie when I was around 13, from like 13 to 17. Um, I went away for a one year sentence, but I had a propensity of always fighting. Like I, I just, it's just always love to fight. Uh, came home and got right back into it, right back into the drug game. And then I uh, did my second dip bit, which was like what we call the skid bit. Went in for one to three, came out, nothing changed. I was just like, whatever. Came back out, um, caught my third bid, um, which was a three to nine. Uh, while in prison, I decided to continue to fight, cut people, stab people. So I kept getting new charges while in prison. I wound up doing 10 years. Um, out of a three to nine, and then it was like, okay, and then moved out to Philadelphia. Nobody wanted me back in New York, so I moved out to Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia, w- what I learned about me is that wherever I went, I always took me with me. And as much as I always wanted to change, although I always try to educate myself a little more, always one that came out a little bit smarter, but still with the same mentality. I got to provide. I got to get new clothes. I have to get the, the jury. I have to, you know, I have to get it. I have to get it fast. I had to play catch up. Yeah. Uh, and that's what happened. And then I moved down to Florida where I came down here for recovery um, after being home from doing the 10 years. I was home maybe three years. 
um, but I already caught a violation in Philadelphia. Um, my parole officer, shout out to Mr. Mason in Philly because like he was one probation officer that literally, literally cared. Like he pulled me to the side one day and said, Anthony, like, I don't know why you're not grabbing. Like you have such potential. He said, you have such amazing potentials when you want to apply it. He's like, I'm going to cut you loose early on your pro, um, probate, um, parole, but I need you to get out this state. Go get some help and do something and follow your dreams. I moved down to Florida. And again, in Florida, came down here for recovery, uh, started working, and got into white-collar crime, and then went away for five years. I've been home now going on six six years in October, be six years. Um, and since this last time is when it resonated with me. Yeah. It really resonated with me, and it was just like, yeah. what's going to change, Anthony? Who are you? Yeah. What do you want out of life? Right. And yeah. changing that mindset. And I started working in prison to educate myself more. I did every program that I can do to educate myself on money ma uh, management, on etiquette, on criminology, on thought process, on, you know, identifying who I truly am as a man or what is it that I, I, I can bring to this world and, you know, what I have to offer. And, okay. Uh, Hold on for me. Hold on. Hold mm -hmm. that. Because I'm yeah. going in segments. You're going into incarceration. Ah. <laughs> I've got in segments. We, we didn't talk about the pre-incarceration. Yeah. I, I, I get that. I get that. Absolutely. I get that. You went through a lot. You went through a lot. Right? And 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 let me, let me ask this. Then I'm coming for you, Eric. Because I always ask individuals when they go to prison, I ask them, what did you have to do to survive prison? Sound like you was already that guy when you went in, like, I ain't to be bothered with, don't play with me. Because some of them say, I had to become something. Sound like you was already that something. I I, 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 I was. So I grew up, when I was a little kid, they nicknamed me Scarface. That was my my street, my name in the street. Um, It was Scarface. And, you know, for a while, it was like a badge of honor to have such a name. But as in prison... When you have a name like Scarface, you have to live up to that moniker, right? People want to know why your name Scarface. Are, are you really Al Pacino in the movie? Are you really about that life? Um, so I, for me, it was like what was started out as, as a nickname became a lifestyle for me. And I, I, would, I literally had to live up to that name. So I was zero tolerance for any type of disrespect. The minute somebody started to go left, I didn't even make, let them make the so the signal turned on left. I was on go. It didn't matter how big you was, who you was with, what gang you was with, what nationality you was, Puerto Rican, black, white. It made me no different. One thing about me, let's just go, right? Um, Hold on, man. Let me tell you something. We need a, we we need a whole series series with this conversation. Yeah, we do. Because we, this we, is yeah, we need a whole series with this thing right here. But this is the deal. To my family members who are out there, let me tell you something. This is all about exposure. Once we get exposed to something, we cannot be unexposed. Right? Absolutely. Because there's a lot of family members and and Trust me, I ain't knocking met met with prison, met in prison, married in prison. I ain't knocking none of that, right? But mm -hmm. my thing is this: Do you even know what your boo then been through, mm -hmm. right? Do you even know? That's because sometimes, fact. yeah, because sometimes you know they they don't know the history. Yeah, and we don't tell it a lot of it's times we don't tell it because we still going through that the trauma and within ourselves and not understanding ourselves and learning yeah. ourselves to be able to express that to our significant other. Right. Mm -hmm. So let me, so were you guys ever in the same prison together? No, never. It's funny you just mentioned that you have to go back on that. When I was doing my three to nine bit, my son's mother, again, I had an opportunity to come home within three years minimum sentence. Right, and I chose to continue to live up to this moniker. And I remember after I think five or five or six and a half years, 
They brought me back down from upstate back to Rikers Island on a new case. And my son's mother came to visit me. And she was very cold, like standoffish. And I was like, what's wrong? And she asked me a question that it resonated with me years later. Uh, and she was like, when are you planning to come home? And and I remember looking at her and I said, well, when they let me out, she said, no, you don't understand. I agreed to stand by you, but every time I turn around, I'm getting a letter from you while you're in the shoe. You want to continue to be a gang member. You want to continue to be this tough guy, but the one who's suffering is me and your son. See, you expect me to continue to keep coming up here every other week. You expect me to keep bringing your son up here to see you, but then I have to go through the trauma while you're in, you, you in solitary confinement. I have to go through the extra BS layer of security because of where you're at while in prison. And my question to you is, when are you going to stop your BS, do your time, and come home? And I literally remember looking at her and said, well, what do you want me to do, be a sucker? And she said, she looked at me and she said, no, I want you to be a fucking man. I want you to Talk man about it, She said, you know, she's like, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think you get it. And for that reason, remember, I used to always tell you one day I'm going to get fed up. That day is today. I will make sure you see your son. I will make sure that you have money on your books. But I have to live my life. And unfortunately, it's not going to be with you. And, and, and like it hit me later on when I got back to the cell. And I'm saying to myself, Nah, she ain't serious. She, you know who I am. She ain't going nowhere, and she stuck to her guns. And it, it resonated with me later, like, wow, she really got fed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my yeah. stupidity and my behavior didn't only affect me; it affected her. Absolutely, in a That's way that I can't even comprehend. That's absolutely right. absolutely and this is again why the, what this platform is because i don't think that a lot of them in, on the inside understand that the trauma and the impact that it has on us one lady told me she said miss sheila i've sat down and i've counted every dime that i have gave given to the system since he's been locked up she says it's over sixty thousand mm. dollars no, that's a fact, especially yeah. mothers, yeah. especially mothers and wives, you know, yeah. um, they, 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 they sacrifice. And that's why I always say that, that, um, any, if you find a, 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 a man that's married in prison, like she's also doing that time, that same time that, that, that you're doing, that we yeah. do, you know, yeah. um, she might not be, you know, in there in that cell, but She's locked up outside, out here. Because, yeah. And she has a lot more responsibilities on her shoulder than, than we do inside. Yeah. You know, yeah. we sit back and wait for that, wait for her to put money on the books. Yeah. You know, we wait for that package to come. Get mad at them when it don't happen fast enough. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. And, and don't yeah. understand, you know. Um, so, so, you know, I think I always said it, it starts with, with you first and foremost inside um the inside has shown me I, I begin to see those brothers that that would like me um grow up in there and that you know show total disregard to their to their wife or to their loved one or to their mother or anyone yeah. that was taking care of them total disregard because you know they living in this moment of just wanting wanting now wanting this and you know taking advantage of um people like I said, we always knew uh, right from wrong. I think yeah. all of us, you know, know right from wrong. And it's 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 when do you, you know, man up and, and say I'm gonna right. take full accountability and responsibility for so for Eric. Your life. So Eric, let me let me ask you this because we briefly talked on that with this one. I was on your show, so. Was it a specific time, a moment that you looked at yourself? Uh, and you say, uh-uh, something got to happen. Anthony, what you just said, so powerful, so powerful, so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. 
But Eric, was it a specific aha moment? Like, man, look here, Absolutely. I can't. Yeah, tell me about Absolutely. that. And I say this with all humility because I'm a, I'm a bit unique um, than the average person in prison. So for me, as soon as they put them cuffs on me and I went into that precinct and I went to in front of that judge before I was even sentenced, I used to say to myself, I'm tired, I'm tired. And so I was facing this 25 years to life and, and I was in this, this court and I was saying to myself, I'm tired. It was like a ton of bricks lifted from my shoulders when I got locked up. And I, I said, yo, man, I don't, I don't want to do this no more. It has to be a better way. And so my transition and my intro self introspection, I believe started when I was locked up for this last time. I didn't share with, with you um, and your followers my sh you know, short life span when I was a youth coming out the house at 12 years old, you know, um, first being arrested, actually going to jail at 15, doing four months, coming out, having probation, going back in, uh, uh, doing uh, one year, one to three, just like Anthony, coming home after one to three, 12 months and receiving 25 years to life after the one and three, going back into the streets, selling drugs for three years before getting locked up and, and you know, not seeing the streets again until August 10th, 2020. When I went into prison, I didn't have my GED. You know, I always tell us because um, I, I, I wanted to inspire those that's, that's in there now, you know, to doing better while you in there. I went in there without a GED and came home with my GED and my associates, my bachelor's and my master's degree. And so thank you. And so, you know, when and when doing that, that was a transition that I was taking early in time. I, I say with all humility and that I'm a bit unique because most men that I grew up with in New York State Prison, it took longer before they actually got it. That aha moment where they say enough is enough. I started immediately, you know, and although when I did go up, I, went, I got locked up in 1993, 1995 is when I got my GED. And that was when, after I received my GED, I began to work in the law library in the prison system. And I told myself, enough is enough. Instead of when that yard, when they opened that gate, because they, you know, the gates open for everybody when they call the yard or gym. And when they open, I close it right back and stay in the cell and get into myself. That's and so I, I took those, I took those necessary decisions, those yeah. important decisions for me because I was tired of making the wrong decision. And yeah. so I had to reach into myself and say, these are the right decisions. Don't be yeah. a follower no more. Yeah. Don't be a follower of the negativity in your past. And so, so you dictate your future. And that's good. what I did. I, I love it. I love it. Listeners, listen, 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 Linda. Listen. Yeah, Linda. <laughs> listen, Linda. Absolutely. What he just said, man, how many of you can say that your loved ones are doing the same thing? Right? How I many of you they can say within two years I got my uh, uh, GED and I went on to further educate myself? just being in there being a knucklehead and not doing anything so you see it can be done and, and that's Absolutely. what we talk about re-entry i'm oh, sorry evie uh oh. this is what we talk a lot about a lot on our show re-entry the, yeah. the, the system has it so backwards so confused and we wonder why our brothers and sisters keep going back with the recidivism world so rate so high is one re-entry we truly believe starts the minute the judge smacks that gravel down and gives you your sentence for you to serve mm -hmm. that should be like your graduation light you're moving now on to the next phase of your life either you get dumber or you get wiser you can be like me and turn a three-year sentence into 10 years you can continue bumping your head until you say you know what oh my god what's that coming down my forehead that's blood i'm tired of hitting my head 
Or you can say, you know what? What I was doing on the street don't work for me. Let me take advantage of what the system has to offer me because now I, I have nothing but time. Let me go to school. Let me educate myself. Let me start surrounding myself with people who are having positive conversation instead of wasting my time in the yard talking about all these fantasy stories, how, how, how much money I was making in the street, what kind of car that I was driving, how many women I, I, I cheated on, how, how many, you know, all this negative stuff that brings you no value at all. Yeah. And let me say this, Anthony. And, and to speak just to speak to that and add on to that um we have of course the system in new york state that i can speak of the system don't have a lot of programs have a lot of things for us to rehabilitate rehabilitate ourselves yeah. oh okay however what we did was in there the men that i grew up with you know and that grew up before me in there you know we created our own program we created our talk own self-help therapeutic programs. Tell, talk so, about that, Eric. Absolutely. Tell us what that looked absolutely. like. Tell us what so that we, looked like. What it looked like is, you know, um, if you went to this this prison called Clinton Correctional Facility, Clinton, you know, it's up in the boondocks called uh, a place called Danamora, New York, you know, uh, uh, Plattsburgh, New York. It's way up north in New York State. And up there, there's, you know, you don't see your color. You don't see black and Hispanic. You don't see minorities up there. That you know, they, it's a family. The corrections, they are family up there. You know, um, and they run that. They run that prison, and they don't want no programs in their prison. Wow. You know, so and they and they serious about that. So what we did was, you know, the the few programs that they did have, we are commenced together, and we are going to these classes and we'll help ourselves and educate ourselves and you know and um and buy books you know on online have our family send us books and bring them to the class business somebody might know business more than the other you know we had white wow. white brothers black white you know people that came in that that had their own businesses that were willing to come to our class and help us to educate us you know wow. and 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 we also have a, a prison that's called sing sing correctional facility fish Kill. these are more progressive prisons that have a lot more programs uh, college education college programs we have non-for-profit organizations that come into the prison and mm -hmm. so with men like myself and brothers i grew up with we said oh man they don't have a well, we have an organization called the Osborne Association, and they have parenting classes. But we we don't have let's let let's create a fatherhood fatherhood and mentoring program for ourselves to be better fathers. You know, mm -hmm. um, um, upon leaving out of here, you know, to show our families, our loved ones, that you know there is room for change. Right. You know, even in a system that don't give give us yeah. rehabilitation. Yeah. you know what i mean and so that's what that's what we done created. in here we created we created you create, yeah you created what you needed right, that's right. And so the, that's this, yeah, the same thing that i did when i needed support to deal with this i created what i needed because there was there was none no support and i'm telling there was no support for the family members so we go we go we, we get ready to turn the curve we've been we've been talking about the family how you guys families doing uh no my family is doing good uh you know me and my wife like you know we it's still but me and my wife are very two strong personalities uh we have created and built an empire you know since i've been home um we both have very strong views um i'm, I'm proud of my wife like she's you know it's very stressful what we do mm -hmm. as, as we spoke about before you know we opened the doors in the state of florida to mental health housing we were the first one to do it um you know and our business grew to just about a, a hundred residents now you know yeah. we're in five different counties um it's very stressful it's a lot of work very hands-on uh, sometimes i get overwhelmed and stressed and we'll argue and we'll go through stuff like that. She's been finding her passion and going back to the church and stuff like that. I mean, 
we get through a lot. But I won't sit here and lie and say that everything is peaches and cream, oh. um, that everything is beautiful. But we've learned each other when to give each other space, when to communicate, when to push, and when to give in. And I think it's about communication. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let me let me say this. Okay, just just talking about talking to a couple of people this week, just this week. Sometimes, uh, even though they 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 you know they go through the programs. Uh, they're so structured, and I'm just going to call it what it is. Some of them are so institutionalized. When mm -hmm. they come home, they want to treat the ho house like it's the penitentiary. Absolutely. Some, I still do. Yeah, 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 man. I mean, some, some yeah. wives like, I got I to gotta take a shower when he takes a shower. Mm -hmm. The lights got to go out at a certain time. You know, yeah. I got to eat what he eat. And, and this is the thing. And she don't feel like taking no shower right um, now. She may uh, not even feel like taking the shower that night, but yeah, this is how he is. And my thing is I tell the family, you can't let him just come in here and run the house like it's the penitentiary because it's not. That's it's right. not. You have to say, I don't feel like taking no shower right now. I don't feel like going to bed at nine o'clock. I mean, we can do it very respectfully. First mm -hmm. time I'm going to tell you, baby, I don't feel like taking a shower. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. Well, if I could, if I could, you know, yeah. speaking on this too, and I say that I'm doing, we doing my family, me and my family, we're doing beautiful. Um, you know, that that's not that's not without the bumps and bruises and you know the 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 the, the, the talking, the arguments, the you know, the issues, the the you know that we have during our journey. You know, um at the end of the day. The negative, the positive, it's all beautiful for me because I'm on this side and I'm able to adjust <laughs> to my wife on this side. So, so when, 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 you know, my, I think mine is different. I, I'm used to waking up at five in the morning, you know, um, every morning, and and I, you know, I sleep with my wife. So when I wake up, it's like she wake up. So she hasn't got used to that yet. You know, like, why are you up? Like, we there's nothing. What are you doing? Five, but five in the morning, I've been able to clear my head, you know, every day in there and in, in the system. And I think better. I've been able to do whatever I need to do for the day at five in the morning, you know? So, and so, go ahead. I'm go sorry. I, look, we, we got a little few more minutes and I, I got a whole lot of stuff to get out y'all yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So were, were you married on the inside? Did you meet your, your wives on the inside or you knew them before? Tell me about yes, this. Yes, so I knew my wife since 1990 when I used to okay. come up to this town and sell drugs, but I never, we never got acquainted. We, we okay. knew each other. We knew each other as friends because her sister messed with a friend of mine's that was selling drugs with me. And but me and my wife never got together. It wasn't until 2010 that okay. me and my wife actually got together. And we've been together since 2010 in prison. While I was in prison, we married in 2012. And we, okay. you know, I came home in 2020. You came home. Okay. So you came home eight years after you guys got married. So what was that like transitioning from prison? Now I'm in the household. I got a, a wife. She 24 seven. She 365. Da, 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 da. How was that, that? Was, that was my gift and my curse. It was, it was hell. It was, it's like being in prison all over again. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know what? I welcome that with open arms because I know that when she does things, it's all out of love. Sometimes I could get upset because I feel I feel closed in. I feel like I can't go nowhere without you. Where you going? However, I know it's all done out of love. I know that that woman loves me and that she been through, you know, a lot with me in prison and me transitioning out here into society. You know, um, that's where the, the um, PTSD comes in. I believe that everyone, I don't care who you are, or, mm -hmm. or if you did time, I don't, I'm not gonna put a degree on time. Five years, two years, 25 years, 30 years, you suffer from some type of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and I, you know, and it's the way you handle it. You know, um, some of us actually get it and we understand these what's going on with ourselves and we take the, the necessary steps to, you know, getting ourselves right. Some of us, we don't get it. We miss the mark and we get to arguing with our significant other and, and, and forget that that person just did this much time with you and she's there because she loved you. You know, and she's doing this out here because she loves you. You know, not because she want to see you staying in the house. You know what I mean? Um, so, she will see you successful, but she also want to make sure that you, you spend time with family. Right. So a lot of that, there's a lot of things that we argue about that's similar with all of us that's that been in the prison system. All of us men. We I noticed in interviewing a lot of men and knowing a lot and of men that's formerly incarcerated, we all have similar stories when it comes to our wives and us transitioning back out here into society. What were you gonna say? So, so, so my, so my guests want to know about therapy. Did any of you guys go to therapy? Yes. Yeah, so I was looking at Missy's question now. So the question to the last person that yes went and asked, uh, no to that question to Valerie. Um, as far as Missy, yes, um, from trauma therapy definitely has to go through some trauma therapy again that's a lot of things that uh transpire through the trauma that eric was just talking about um i'm a very strong believer in therapy right because some of us you know we don't want to face a lot of things but it hinders us from our growth right uh we start to believe that the lies that we created in our, in, our, in our lives you know that men don't cry or you know it's never my fault it's everybody else's fault when we don't take the accountability i truly believe and i tell you all the time i stand by therapy because there are some things that we don't recognize that we need to speak out loud to someone who doesn't have judgment that can just point out to us where where it's hindering us from moving forward. So that was a good question. Um, so yeah, I, I've done therapy, I've done trauma therapy. Um, because again, I had to persuade myself that I wasn't Scarface. Mm, you wore that mask for so long. I had to learn to be Anthony, even when I talk about this, you know, even when I was in prison, when I started to transition and starting to believe in who I am, I had to put positive affirmations on myself. And my sink over my over my little scratched up mirror. I love it. And I, I used to have it. a cellmate that used to always wake up, and you know he had life, and he used to tell me, "Why do I have to wake up every morning and brush my teeth and look at these freaking words out here that I'm compassionate, that I'm smart, that I'm funny, that I'm loving?" That he's like, "Yeah, I'm none of that stuff." And I go, "I understand that. Then it doesn't apply to you. I'm asking you to leave my stuff there alone." Yeah because this is who I'm trying to believe I am, because I don't want to be a killer. I don't want to be a monster. I don't want to be cold-hearted. I don't want to be all these things that keep yeah. me back here. Yeah. You know what? That is so it. You got to do the work. And like you say, why do I have to say this? Why do I have to do this? This is the thing. In order to change, you're going to have to do some things you may not mm -hmm. feel like doing. You may have to say some things you may not feel like. That's how transformation takes place. And this is another thing. Family members, hear me out. See, we're trying to wait till they, they, they come out before we start feeding them this. You can't wait till they get out this back gate and start saying, oh, babe, I need you to do your affirmations today. Mm -hmm. No, you better send them them affirmations, not better. But you need to send them those affirmations now. Yeah, and yeah. on my website... I have so many downloadable resources. All you have to do is download it, print it out, and send it out. Send it to nice. them. Change, right? Right. Change, change comes with our, our mindset. If That's we don't it. change our mindset on how That's we it. view ourselves, right? How do we expect to be who we're destined to really truly be? Yeah. Right. Uh, That's a question here by your um by Kat. The biggest relationship adjustment for me was learning to sleep in a bed with another person after sleeping on a twin size thin mattress for so many years now to be in a bed and cuddle and feel somebody else's warmth yeah um that was the biggest adjustment for me right because yeah. you know I, I i'm not a very touchy feeling type of person so you know 
that was a big adjustment for and me. And I think that. the biggest adjustment for me is was um us adjusting to being patient with each other. Mm-hmm. We, you know, I've been home August 10th, 2020. You know, we still we still um struggle with it. Um, however, we know that that and there's nobody else that's gonna do it <laughs> for us but <laughs> us. So we we acknowledge it. Sometimes we wanna be in self-denial with each other because like Anthony wife, my wife and I, we both strong headed, you know, independent um, you know, beings. And so, you know, we 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 clash, we clash. However, like I said, and I always tell everybody, even all of any anybody that I know or know of formerly incarcerated that and I know a lot of brothers that's home now and that's dealing, you know, with the same similar, you know, journey that I'm dealing with. And I always tell them, man, I deal with it. I don't care what it is with a smile. My wife will tell you at the end of an argument, Eric has a smile. And I and I ask her to smile. No, you did me. <laughs> you know, and I ask her to smile. Sometimes she don't. Sometimes it takes three days. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Take a couple of days. But at the end of the day, she realizes that and she she appreciates that and say thank you for that because a lot of times it's it's the patience. We don't have patience with each other. Yeah, yeah. But and let me ask you guys this, man. We got it. We got it. We 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 got. I didn't ran yeah, over. You gotta have us on again. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I tell you, we may have to make this a series. Yeah, you know, any so time. This, is the, this is the deal, guys. So uh, some of these ladies that are in this uh, 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 on this live, some of them, their loved ones are still locked up. Some of them, their loved ones have came home and they are divorced now. Some of them are in the struggle in the struggle right now with mm-hmm. their loved ones and like i said before it's like the same behaviors different household so it's the same emotional the psychological the the mental stress do you i mean do guys even you just said you know you talk to a lot of guys that have come home and they were the, in the same struggle but do you guys really understand the emotional toll that it puts on us when we're trying to support someone, right? Just like we're needing patience from you, you guys need patience for us. This is new to us. This is, this is so new to us. But if you if you really understand the, I mean, t- I'm telling you, and wives and girlfriends sometimes we want to talk to you guys or them or whomever we don't know how because we don't know what's going to set it off bingo right you just hit it sheila you just hit it from my personal view this is what i i I, I truly believe because this is what i had to do to get to where i'm at this is just my experience right to that question with the woman out there that's struggling with what they they man or they loved one still incarcerated yes coming home I truly believe conversation, open conversation. Let's stop trying to impress one another. Let's stop trying to say the things that we think that the other one wants to hear, right? Is to really sit down, even while they're incarcerated or when they come home, to actually be able to sit down with your loved one. And I think it's very important and detrimental that you do that and explain what the expectations are how can we communicate what is the view and what is the vision where are we trying to achieve and what are we where are we trying to go together if those things are not in alignment right it's okay have that conversation how can y'all get in alignment and if it's non-compromisable that my alignment is going to stay over here and yours is over there it's okay to say listen no hard feelings don't Absolutely. drag down with you right i would always love you i would care for you but if i'm trying to go over here you're trying to go over there and there's no meeting in the middle why drag it out and i think some people for 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 a lot of relationship they feel because they've committed you know that the girl did the time with them or you know that they owe them or you know the man feel you know that i'll stand here because she held me down right no it's got to be more than that 
It has to be something that y'all both want to be in alignment with, right? And if, it, and if it's to to live in a happy life and be in a business together or work to support the family and have that dynamic, it has to be in line because most people don't have that conversation. Yeah, they yeah. get the, the blitz of happiness of, oh, they home, you know, it's goes then all of a sudden it's like, I can't get that job, right? And it's like, yo, babe, you're home now. Um, you know, it's been six weeks now. You, 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 you know, the bills are getting heavy, right? Yeah, um, that's right. And, um, that's yeah. The, and that's the struggle, if I could. And that's the struggle, right? Um, adjusting to that, to to finding what y'all both, where y'all both at in life, and which which y'all both are able to walk that same path together. Yeah. You know what I mean? In terms of whatever it may be for y'all, on um, communication, yeah. communication is very, very, very yeah. important. And I understand what you said, um, Sheila, and you and you're absolutely right that um a lot of times we don't we we don't understand the women that 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 did this time with us and and i have to say to anyone that's in prison and that comes home and that's in a relationship go back to prison go back the right way now go visit someone and 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 watch those look at those steps that that wife that girlfriend that mother of yours walked with those packages in their hand walk up those steps because that happened for me i came home in 2020 and 2021 i went back to the same prison i i was in on where i got my education and i went to their graduation i went to inspire other brothers that were still in there that are still in there looking to come home and i walked the steps that my wife used to walk every weekend and yeah. and 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 i i literally broke down walking down those steps like wow she had to go through all of this no, with no help and bringing those packages to me once a month 35 like, pounds you know and, and and it's it's amazing you know and i've seen a i found the newfound found look you know on life with our wives and our sisters and our mothers and our aunts our women that because most of the time in the prison where i came from that 95 percent of women that's on the visit floor and it might be three percent that's men wow. need i say more because we have yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you know you gotta yeah. we can't leave out the the, the yeah. other gender you know man this but, is so yeah. good this this is this is so good i mean every time y'all say something i can pull something else out of there but i'm on I'm, we're close five minutes four minutes we close <laughs> i want to close with this we're not so, closing still we I, in. We, no. we yeah, yeah. We're taking over. We taking this over. Now. Man, look at here. So, 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 Anthony, you talked about communication, right? Let me tell you something. It's some brothers that come out here somewhat. And when I say brothers, I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about. But they don't know how to communicate, and they and their pride, their pride won't let them say I don't know. I talked about that in my book. I have a chapter in my book called mm -hmm. I Don't Know. Uh -huh. right? yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so we have to get them to the point where, okay, man, just have to accept the fact that you were away. You had somebody making decisions for you. So you didn't have to do a whole lot of communication. So my communication skills are lacking right now. So I don't know. Right. Well, that's, so where, we that's where learning the hard way come in. Learning yeah. the, some people got to learn the hard way, just like we had to learn to transition ourselves and to be better persons while we were in there to come out here and be a better person. They, you, you're going to have to. And I would say, I would dare to say therapy is definitely number one on the tolling pole the, to, to, to getting yourself together. Also, to go into these groups that a lot of men don't like to go to when they come home. Oh, I don't need that. I did that in prison. I don't need to go to uh, AA. I don't need to go to anger management class. Yes, we yeah. do. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. We need these things. You know what we I mean? It. So it's very important. It. So I understand. Yeah. I'm with you a thousand percent on that. And this is a, this is another thing that I'm working on. I have I'm gonna have to see how I can fit it in because uh, uh, there were it was about I guess about 15 guys. They came from little different units around here in Texas, and so I had a support group for men. You know, when they come out, y'all need a safe space where you can talk. You can say, man, I don't know how to do this. This chick want me to do this. I don't know how to do this. What can you have? You, you needed a safe space. 
But during that time, me and Kevin were still trying to duke this thing out. So it became too much for me. So I mm. backed out and I said, Kevin, will you take over the group? And he said, I will take over the group. But the guys, they so used to Miss Sheila just nurturing them. And they like, Miss Sheila, you ain't going to be in the group. We ain't going to be in the group. You okay. Well, nurturing, yeah, 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 you yeah, are yeah. But, <laughs> but, but my thing is this. We need to create a safe space for these brothers coming out. Absolutely. And, 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 that's, and that's really the key. Right, but they got they got to want it too. They got yeah, got, those who want it. Want it like, and I tell people like, listen, you ain't got to impress me. You ain't got to lie to me. Listen, at the end of the day, you got to look in the mirror with your own self and deal with whatever it is that your life is going about, right? And if you ain't willing to take take some accountability and responsibility and find the the guidance and and and, and the tools that you need to be the better person that you are, you're gonna yes be the same person you was. Pardon me. You know, we're, we're, I'm in recovery, right? I celebrated over, I got over 10 years, you know, of sobriety, haven't had a drink, no drugs, no nothing, don't even smoke cigarettes, right? And I used to do this men's meeting. We had created this men's meeting out here. And the men's meeting is because when you go to a co ed meeting, that ego comes out. Guys want to talk and press and they're out. Yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, I got clean. Now I'm driving a Mercedes Benz and I got the Rolexes and I got all this, right? And it's like, okay, is that recovery or that's ego, right? So we created this men group where we can go in there and be vulnerable and cry. And I love that meeting because it was just all men. And we used to be able to sit there and open up on what's really going on without having that ego and, Having women looking at it like, man, that's a tough guy. This, that, and the third. Get vulnerable. Sometimes yeah. to do that, you have to get uncomfortable to get to a comfortable feeling in life. Yes. And yes. now we Absolutely. just don't want to do that, and don't, and, and so we don't grow. Yeah, growth comes from being uncomfortable. uncomfortable. You got to be uncomfortable. Yeah. With the thing you right. got to right. say some things you ain't willing to say. Do yes. some things. I, go to some. Man, I, I got I go through a lot of uncomfortable, but it comes with growth and development. Growth. The only way to grow a baby don't come out of his mom, mama's stomach, you know, already knowing how to go to the refrigerator or 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 or, 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 yeah. or, or breastfeed a pump, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. another thing that I learned, you know, I learned incarcerated is that you know, I begin to become an open book. And everybody that know me knows that I'm an open book. I'm vulnerable yeah. to everything now. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't hold back anything in life. Uh, me. And so yeah. my journey has taken me to being able to embrace the negative and the positive. Yeah. Anything that come my way, you know, yeah. I embrace it and I crush it. Soon as fast as the negativity comes in, you know, my way, I crush it. That's out the way because I'm right. full positivity. And and I think that's what a lot of people have to, for real, I think that's a part of your growth and development. You yeah. being able to, you know, take that on and understand that, yeah. you know, we're going to get a lot of negativity. We're going to get a lot of things that come to I us. Am. We got to take, we got to take full accountability and responsibility yeah. for our lives. And that's okay, just what it is. Yeah. yeah. So the last few minutes, talk to us about success after lockdown. Uh, and well, why it was created? So success after lockdown was actually created, you know, um, as a platform for men and women that's formerly incarcerated home as making a difference, doing something positive for their community, within their community and their lives, you know, and their families. And um, it's bigger than a podcast, you know, so um, we got a lot of big things that we're looking forward to with success after lockdown. Uh, one is definitely seeing us on the network soon, you know. Yeah. Um, so, and we we looking for any sponsors that that you know can help us to to bring in this message to Houston, to Utah, to to uh, uh, Nebraska, everywhere because there's there's a success in every state in this country, I believe, after yeah. lockdown. And we and and we we it's measured. This ain't just we don't just talk about this. You know, you successful, you rich. This is measured. Success yeah. is measured, and that's what we look at. You know, and on our journey, we already been to Florida. We did our podcast in Florida. We look to do it in Atlanta next. We look to be in Houston 
you know, another time we used to, we, we looked to be in North Carolina and we yeah. definitely didn't stay connected to individuals like yourself and others that's formerly incarcerated. That's yeah. making a difference in their community and they state, you know, because we look, we, we want to travel, you know, and tell our story and, and be able to get into the prisons and, and, and speak our truth. So, so, so you must didn't get the, the memo or the email that y'all stuck with me. Hey, okay. absolutely, we got it. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I just want to make sure you got the email. But anyway, guys, you know from the from the comments in the feed, uh, the audience have enjoyed this live, and we're definitely gonna have to do it again. Uh, and we're gonna have to get something where we can collaborate to do something again where we can get you know couples in uh in in a group together you know we can have a a, a live with just couples <laughs> yeah yeah if we can i mean yeah if we need to do that because the thing again is exposure you That's know right. you know it's exposure once yeah. we get exposed to certain things we can't ex unexpose it so, and if we truly want to help people to succeed, not on the outside, but on the from within too, we have to be willing to have conversations as such. We have to be willing to talk not only about the success, but also the struggle, right? Absolutely. We have to be able to pull some stuff back. I love you, brothers. I appreciate you, brothers. Thank you so much. Uh, when I ask you to come, just, hey, just let me know when uh and and we're gonna we gonna have this conversation again absolutely really? absolutely yeah. sheila again it's always a pleasure having you hearing your voice your inspiration your motivation what you do you don't have to do it but you are the voice for all those lost voices who stand there with their thoughts at night and wondering how am i going to pull this together yeah. how am i going to figure it out so kudos to you you know like um, it's, that's amazing. You are a pillar for those women that we don't understand because that we took for granted. So continue to do that. I know my wife will be excited to meet you. Uh, and it's always an honor and a privilege. And you can reach me anytime. I'm available. We'll make it happen. Hey, Jason. Go ahead. So long from Eric. I just want Mark to drop you guys' his handle uh facebook page or whatever in the, the the feed so you guys who are on the live y'all follow these brothers follow success okay. after lockdown i've been looking at them they're doing some amazing things uh just follow them on ig on youtube TikTok, and, uh, anchor spotify <laughs> uh youtube we're on all social media. Yeah. Uh, you know, my personal social media is also Anthony Colon 1188. Uh, you know, the same thing as my my, my Facebook. Uh, you know, follow us, subscribe. You know, if you yeah. know someone that 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 been where we've been at and doing making an impact in their community and coming home, please send us an email at successafterlockdown at gmail.com. We'd we'll love yeah. to interview them and yeah. talk about them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And if I could, if I could just um just uh just wanna um right now I'm I'm over and my my head is 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 in another space right now looking because I don't know if my producer put it up or not, but we um we actually um we are on another um we are on another platform called Patreon. Um, I, I don't know how much uh, your followers uh, heard about Patreon, but on um, Patreon um, is where we will be, um, where our content will be, our full interviews for Success After Lockdown will be on Patreon, where our followers and friends and, and those that want to support us can support us and help us. And we have membership uh, on, on Patreon as well. You know, um, for, for as little as five dollars a member, okay. you know, to get full access and full, you know, disclosure of our our um full interviews that's coming out, and yeah. they'll see that soon on our platform at success after lockdown at gmail .com. You know, yeah. and like um Anthony said, we are we are currently on Apple Music, uh, uh Anchor, you know, uh, uh all the other platforms. So that's, IG, Instagram, 
TikTok. You know, I always push TikTok because I stay on TikTok. I, you know, when, when my daughter, she's on a, my daughter, my daughter's uh, plays. She plays for her basketball team. You know, she's twelve, and uh, I'm always uh, showcasing yeah. her TikTok. Yeah, y'all hit the ground running because I just put up a YouTube and I ain't did nothing with it. I just put it out there. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm on, I'm over on YouTube, but I ain't did nothing That's with YouTube. Me. But again, guys, thank you so much. I'll definitely be on, in touch thinking about some things that we can do. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yeah, thank you for That's your support. Right. Um, yeah, so and, and, you and, and you inspired me. Sorry to cut you off. That's there go Thugs Revenge and, and Wife After Prison. You Who's and that? Anthony. That's my book. That's my book. <laughs> oh, Anthony, you mean oh, okay. Your mind's is coming now. Cause y'all inspired me to write mines now. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! So are yours? Is your yours on Amazon? It it, it was. Uh, that's another story. But if you want a book and a copy, just get at me. I'll send you a copy. Okay. And my and my uh my uh followers, we need to know how to, to get that. But yeah, I, and, you, and, I, and Mark is working on that. He is about to. Yeah, he's Mark about is to working on, on that. Amazon. Uh, but yeah, anybody can just reach me through Facebook on Instagram or whatever. I got plenty of copies here. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, guys. Okay, we get we gotta go, but uh we got we need to do some things together. Absolutely. We're here, let's do it. Okay. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Okay. Happy Saturday, and let's go 49ers. Oh, okay. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's go, KC. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll get you the copy. I'll get you the copy of this, okay? Okay. Absolutely. Thank you again. All right. All right. Love, love you guys. You. Okay. Bye. Yes. Bye. -bye. Bye.